New Year, new series. This is a beginner's guide to getting started on each of these different platforms. First up is Instagram. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss an episode. And let's hop on in. As of late 2020, Instagram had an advertising audience of over 1.16 billion people. And according to research from Hootsuite, the most active demographic on IG is 18 through 29 year olds in the United States. Now that's not to say that your ideal customer isn't on Instagram if they don't fall into that range. Research from Sprout Social shows that 47% of 30 to 49 year olds and 23% of 50 to 64 year olds also use the app. So moral of the story is shoot your shot. 90% of Instagram users follow at least one brand on the platform. And in 2019, 85% of teens said that IG was their preferred social network. When I think of Instagram personally, I think of fun, entertaining, informative, yet accessible content. Back in the day, it was meant to be a truly instant platform where you snapped a quick pic with your phone and posted it real time, but it's definitely become quite a bit more refined and calculated over the years. Even still, it's a more casual platform than something like LinkedIn or even YouTube, which requires hours of production and editing. Getting started on Instagram is pretty straightforward. You'll just sign up using your email address or phone number on either the mobile app or on the website. Now, here's the first thing you'll want to think strategically about your username. Your username can be changed on like some social networks, but as someone who has done it myself, it's a huge pain and it can cause a lot of missed opportunities. So I really recommend picking something that you're willing to stick with for a while or forever. My general advice is to choose a username that most closely resembles either your own name or pseudonym or your business name, depending on the type of account that you're gonna go ahead and set up. If neither of those are available, you can add a V to the beginning like I did. You can experiment with periods, underscores, or variations of the name in question. Just be careful about using too many underscores. This is something I've noticed. They can really blend together and make it very hard for people to actually find you. So anyway, you'll then want to choose a profile photo. Now, if you're a personal brand or just a personal account, go ahead and choose an inviting headshot of yourself. I notice that when my arms are crossed or I have a toothless smile, I can come across as a bit harsh. So choose a photo where your body is a bit more opened up, your eyes are locked in with the camera lens, and ideally you're smiling a big toothy grin. If you're starting a business page, a high quality logo usually works best. Once you're in the app, your bio is the next big profile element that you'll want to get started with. You have just 150 characters to convey your message to the world, so think carefully on this. I generally recommend telling people these things. One, who you are, two, what you do, three, your unique selling proposition, or what exactly they'll stand to benefit from following you. Of course, do your own research to see what the standard is in your particular industry. For example, brick and mortar retailers may choose to include business hours, fashion models may want to tag their agency and so on and so forth. Instagram is one of those platforms that has a ton of features, some of which are actually super new. So we are gonna go through this section rather quickly. It's meant to be an introduction to these features. And if you'd like to dive deeper, let me know by commenting down below so I can do a dedicated video. And of course you can always research and experiment and test things on your own too. Feature one, Instagram's original feature is the grid or post feature. The grid displays three pieces of media across the width of a cell phone screen or a desktop browser. The grid was originally made up of photos, but now includes videos too. Either way, the key thing to remember here is that everything will be cropped in the preview to a square. So it's important that whatever you post, you get the key focal element in the center of the photo or video so that it's visible in grid view. 
From a strategy perspective, it's also important to remember that this is essentially the front page of your Instagram. I always recommend keeping your images similar enough in style that they could look like cousins, meaning I'm not going to post a bright orange graphic next to a soft, dusty rose graphic next to a rustic photo of a barn. Unless the style you're going for is totally eccentric and mismatched, I'd stick to a general color palette and editing style. Feature two, stories. Clicking on the plus sign in the top right corner of your profile page enables you to create a new story and you can click on anyone's profile picture when it's illuminated in the pink and orange kind of ring to watch theirs. Stories are pieces of micro content. They're 15 seconds each and they live for just 24 hours unless you add them to a highlight, which I'll dive into in just a second here. You can choose to take photos, videos, boomerangs, or type text in create mode and there are also a ton of fun filters, stickers, GIFs, and interactive elements like polls and questions to explore. I won't go through all of these features here, but do be sure to play around with them. They're really fun and super engaging. You can also pull in existing photos and videos that you have on your phone by swiping up. Now you may notice, speaking of swipe up, that some people have the option to post links in their stories. And as of now, you must have 10,000 followers to enable that feature. Highlights are feature number three. They're the convergence of the grid and stories. Basically, you can click the highlight button when you're viewing your story back to pin it to your profile. There is another way to create highlights as well, which I will link my tutorial on that in the cards and also down below. Strategy wise, I recommend using these highlights as a display of your content pillars or service offerings. For example, if I was a social media manager, I might have a highlight called services where I showcase the type of work I do and how to get in touch with me. Testimonials with videos and quotes from my past and current clients and maybe freebies where I share fun phone backgrounds and templates and things like that. You want to keep these highlights on brand because again, they're front and center when people first come to your page. Feature number four, is IGTV. You can upload videos to your grid as a post as long as it's under one minute. But if you wanna post something longer, you'll need to either cut it up into parts or upload it as an IGTV or Instagram TV video. IGTV videos can be between 15 minutes and 60 minutes depending on whether you're uploading from your mobile device or your web device. Feature number five, live. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> live videos are exactly what they sound like. Live Instagram videos that you can broadcast to your followers. For now, you can only go live from a mobile device and Instagram recently extended the maximum length of live videos from one hour to four. You can save them to your IGTV once they're over for people to watch after the facts and you'll be able to see a chat feature while you're live so that you can take viewer requests and questions and read their comments and things like that. It's really fun. And feature number six is Reels. Reels is the newest of the bunch. A reel is basically a 15 or 30 second video that lives in your grid and or the reels tab of your profile. It's been compared to a TikTok, but you can really use it for a lot of different things. I just created a recap video of my 2020, just stitching together some different video clips I had on my phone, but you can also do the more traditional TikTok-esque tip trick where you point to different words or add in homemade transitions and fun stuff like that. One of the best features about Reels is that you can use music from Spotify in your creations. Now, like I said, there are a lot of features within the Instagram app, and I don't want to take up the entire video going in depth on every single one, but those are the most common features that you'll likely encounter, at least when you're first getting started on Instagram. If you want a part two with shop, DMs, ads, and anything else that I might be missing, be sure to comment down below and let me know. So let's talk about strategy. Planning out your content for Instagram can be a little bit overwhelming considering the number of different things that you can actually do with the app. Again, 
do your own research and testing. Don't solely go off of my very general advice as it does vary by category and it's always updating. But most accounts can benefit from posting once per day in the grid and a few times per day in stories. Ideally, one of those grid posts would be an IGTV and a couple of them would be a reel. Throw in a weekly live and the Instagram algorithm might kind of favor you. But hold on. I know what you're thinking. If you go to my Instagram at the Latasha James, you'll notice that I don't do all of those things. Yet my follower account has doubled in the past year alone while maintaining a healthy four to five percent engagement rate. Here's the truth about Instagram content or really any social content for that matter. You have to create posts that help people show them value. That is the most important thing. So don't post a boring reel just to post a reel. Don't go live only to stare at your phone looking bored, right? Start with a set of content pillars or key themes that your Instagram is going to cover. For example, maybe your retail store is going to focus on new arrivals, styling tips, and user generated content. Then figure out where each of those different content pillars will fit in with the different Instagram features. I like to use a whiteboard or paper calendar just to jot down ideas on this. Maybe every Tuesday and Thursday, it's gonna be an IG grid post featuring a customer wearing your brand. Mondays are new arrival days. So you go live showing off the different pieces and Friday you do a fun styling reel to encourage customers to come in and shop over the weekend. And Wednesdays are a wild card day based on whatever is going on in the store and in the world. Day to day, you'll post any daily updates in your stories, you know, updated store hours, events, products, and user generated content as you're tagged in it. You also wanna make sure that your content is high quality. So take original photos and edit them in an app like ViscoCam or Lightroom using a similar editing style as your other photos so that they maintain a cohesive look. Use proper photography techniques like paying attention to headspace and the rule of thirds, keeping your camera steady for videos by using a tripod and use a microphone if you can when you're recording lots of audio through your mobile device. You'll also wanna be sure that you're creating content in the right formats for the different features like stories, grid posts, IGTV, reels, etc., I'm gonna leave a link down below to a great resource that includes the proper dimensions for every IG format. Okay, so once you've mapped out a content calendar and started rolling with it for a little bit, you'll wanna check your insights to see how things are going. One of the things I like to look out for is my most saved post, along with the posts that are most liked and commented on. You can even track which of your posts cause people to follow you, click on your website and more. It all comes down to your goal. What do you want your Instagram to actually do for you? Get you more leads on your website, generate a buzz about your new product, encourage in-person visits, Think about those goals and then match them up with social insights so that you can start creating more content that generates the intended results. For more on Instagram insights, be sure to check out my video on Instagram insights. I'll link it right here and also down below. Now, one of the keys to conquering the algorithm is engagement or essentially communication with the greater Instagram community. A post engagement is defined by Instagram as a like or a comment on a post and engagement rate is the sum of those engagements divided by the number of followers that you have. So for example, if I have 10,000 followers and I get 400 likes and 50 comments on a post, my engagement rate is 4.5%. I recommend aiming for at least 3% engagement rate across your account. Now, of course, the higher, the better. So there is that. Let's talk about some of the ways to boost engagements with your posts. So inbound, you can do hashtags, location tags, and copywriting. You're allowed up to 30 hashtags on each post. Come up with a few different sets or groups of hashtags that you can easily copy and paste and customize to each individual post. 
Go long tail as opposed to short. So hashtag Detroit weddings versus hashtag weddings if you are a local wedding planner. You can use the search bar on Instagram to get a gauge of how active and high quality the hashtags are, which will take some time up front. But once you have your sets ready to go, it will be a breeze. This step is super important because you want to get quality engagements that are actually in your ideal client base, not just random like for like, comment for comment type engagements. Location tags can be a great way to get in front of people in your local community. If you have a brick and mortar storefront, you can add it to Instagram as an official location tag, which can help encourage people to like and share while at your place of business. If not, using a general tag like California or Los Angeles can boost you up in the rankings for people in that area. And use CTAs or calls to action in your copywriting. For example, if you post a photo of a book you enjoyed, Ask your viewers to comment with a book recommendation they have for you. People love to share their own opinions and feel like experts in their own right. The key here is to keep it simple. Avoid questions like, what would you do if you had all the money in the world? <laughs> or what is the meaning of a life? Remember that people are usually visiting Instagram from their phones. So deep, overly personal questions can just be overwhelming. Go for one, two, or three word answers that are easy to come up with on the spot. It's also worth noting that Instagram loves it when you use all of their features, especially their new ones. So whether that's posting a reel, going live, or using IGTV, having these things in the mix will help you rise to the top of the feed, likely resulting in more likes, comments, shares, saves, etc. Now for outbound, you can do outbound comments, IG stories, and collaborations. Now remember that list of hashtags I told you about? Use that to communicate with your ideal clients too. Think of the hashtags that they use and go through them regularly. Tapping on the hashtag and browsing the media within it gives you direct access to people that you want to communicate with. The trick to using an outbound comment strategy is simple. Be genuine. Read their caption, check out their profile, throw them a follow if you feel genuinely inspired by them, and then comment. Nothing screams attention seeker or spammer more than heart eye emoji and love this babe. Having a solid Instagram story strategy also helps get your grid posts more engagements. There's a couple ways. Most importantly, it keeps you top of mind for people and top of feed for your audience. If you post daily to your stories, your grid posts will likely show up for people who watch and engage with those stories. You can also share your posts to your stories by using the little airplane, which encourages people to comment on them or read your full caption. Just don't be spammy, meaning it might not make sense to do this for every post, but when you have big news or something very valuable to share, go for it. And collaborations are another great way to generate engagement. Tag brands when they're relevant. So for example, maybe you drive a Chevy truck and you tag that in a picture, or you wear a particular clothing brand and you tag that. Then you can go through the tag tab of their profile and comment on other super fans of that brand. Chances are, if you have one thing in common with them, you probably have others too. You can also pitch Instagram live collaborations with others in your industry or share with permission other users' photos to your story or grid, which will in turn encourage them and their fans to engage with your post. Okay, with all of that said, how do you grow your following on Instagram? Here's my highs framework in a nutshell. Develop content that helps your ideal client. Don't be overly self-promotional. Genuinely help them solve a problem that they have, whether that's applying makeup to look good on camera, managing their day-to-day -day life as an entrepreneur, or shopping for clothes that work for their body type. Integrate Instagram's new features into your content strategy whenever they make sense, but do them all the way, not just to say that you did them.
and use all of their features as much as you can. That means that in a perfect world, your grid post would have a location tag, a user tag, an IG filter, a quality caption, hashtags, and a pinned comment. Engage with both your existing community, AKA followers, by having conversations with them, but also with a larger Instagram community. Use hashtags that attract your ideal clients and go after your ideal clients by commenting on posts within the hashtags that they use. And study your insights at least once per month to see what content is generating followers and engagements for you. Post more content in that style, and you can even repurpose old content that you've used once before, but likely hasn't been seen by many of your new audience members. If you missed my recent podcast all about how I nearly doubled my Instagram following completely organically, I will go ahead and link that for you in the cards and also down below. Okay, was this helpful? If so, let me know by leaving me a thumbs up and comment down below with your favorite Instagram tips so that we can all continue learning from one another. This social media marketing for beginner series is just getting started. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that way you'll be notified when the next one goes live. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I will talk to you very soon in a new video. Bye.